You know what we need? Americans, we didn't used to scare this easy. What has happened to us? How many of you feel like you just need to get rid of that poodle spirit and get that lion thing going on? Get that lion to Get that lion thing going on again. Somebody said hallelujah. Somebody said hallelujah. This is the danger of modern preachers and modern preaching. It's two words, and listen to me, self-preservation. They don't want to give up their life for the sheep. They don't want to stand against government on behalf of the sheep. I was in a meeting that was packed out in a church. And there were several pastors there. And I love pastors. They're my friends. I'll do everything I can for a pastor. But when any preacher, whether he's an evangelist or a pastor, apostle, a teacher, prophet, when they become a coward, when they become compromised, when they are thinking about hanging on to what they've got, and I want to shake them and say, how dare you believe that if you leave preaching against abortion out of your pulpit, that if you leave preaching against marriage being between a man and a woman, in order to hold on to some harebrained tither, some woke Christian, you don't realize that what you're doing is not even logical within your own framework. Why did you stop preaching on the word? Because I don't want to lose people. I, I said, don't you understand? We're about to lose it all. We're about to lose it all. And the things you refuse to preach on today will in the immediate future become illegal for you to ever preach again. And the only way to keep your church is to remember the verse that says on this Rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. How many of you believe that? Well, and so Paul standing there with that note, reading it. Do I leave or do I stay? If I leave, I've got a great testimony. God busted the man of God out of prison with an earthquake. If I stay, I might be killed. If I go, I'll have a great story, and nobody's going to know any different. And there won't be a Philippian church. But if I stay and enforce the word of God over California, I mean over Philippi, There could be a great miracle. So he crumpled up the paper, made his point. He said, you know what I want? Tell those individuals I want a parade. So last night, I drew the parade route on a prison napkin. We're going to march through town. I want them to march with me. You go get them right now. Tell them to come over here right now. We want to see them. So they brought them, and they marched. And there were a handful of people trembling in their boots, like Anne Frank and others Jews that were in Germany. Because we're getting there. Christians meeting in secret, like they did in Philippi, knocking on the door. And a man looked at me, a theologian, and he said, Mario, you need to understand that this is the will of God, that it's the last days, and God said that men would wax worse and worse. And I looked at him and said, in love, I do not know what you are smoking, 
But it is the sworn duty of every man and woman of God to stop persecution, to stop illegal religious persecution, and to keep the church free as long as possible. That's our job. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what class you missed. But that is the job. So Paul said to him, here's the parade route. We're going this way. And these people are huddled behind a door. And they hear a knock. And they heard that knock on the door. And when they opened it, there was a grinning Paul the Apostle. I want to introduce you to the chief of police and the mayor of Philippi. These boys behind them are the board of directors. And they have unanimously decided that Philippi is going to have a Christian church. You need to shout right now. You need to shout right now. Later on, Paul the Apostle wrote a verse in Philippians 1, verse 6, that capsulized everything that happened in that jail with that note and with that moment. He said, he that began a good work in you, Philippi, will complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. Look at me right now. The house ain't going nowhere. The house in Modesto is not shutting down anything. We're not changing our message. We're not backing down. We're not diluting. We're not doubting. We're not divided. We have just begun to win souls. Somebody give God the glory. Give God the glory. It's midnight. We can either sing the way you sang this morning. Shake off the pandemic. You know, y'all sing, and I'm saying this to the crowd that's watching online. Y'all sing, I'm no longer a slave to fear, but I can't go back to church because I'm afraid of the virus. So, something bad wrong with that right there. The hour is at hand for preachers to emerge with spines, consciences, and the heart of a lion. The hour has arrived, and, and I'm going to tell you, folks, I'm not, I'm not a joke. No, sir. There's nothing that the devil has brought that I didn't already see as a kid in the ghetto. Somebody said, well, where'd you get your immunity from? Ha! Ha! You know, I didn't, until I met my wife, I didn't look at the expiration date on things in food. <laughs> Did any of you do that in the ghetto? Like, I, what does it say when this milk expires? It expires when you drink it and it's one lump. <laughs> You're not helping me enough. You know, well, you know Jamba Juice. Are you, are you with me? You know Jamba Juice? Yeah. This was made by a very serene Eskimo with water that 10,000 years ago was purified for your sake. We had red Kool-Aid. Does anybody remember red Kool-Aid? Now let me talk to you for a second. What fruit is red Kool-Aid? He didn't say this came from a strawberry. He it said it's red. And you say, well, man, you, you ate some horrible stuff. Well, let me tell you, friends, I'm immune. And all of you with your organic and your vegan and all that, you get everything that comes down the pike. Said, I hadn't had malaria yet. Well, here it comes, brother. You, you drink that. <laughs> Help me. You drink that ghetto water. You go to school with everyone that has mumps and measles and everything else. And the teacher that sniffled for four years. 
You know what we need? Americans, we didn't used to scare this easy. What has happened to us? How many of you feel like you just need to get rid of that poodle spirit and get that lion thing going on? Get that lion to Get that lion thing going on again. Somebody said hallelujah. Somebody said hallelujah. Hallelujah.